And Jake is here with uh, half of Waterloo University, I think. <laughs> Jason Pan, Nicholas Yelich, Victor Chan, Jimmy Shu, and oh yes, Jake is here with his mom, his dad, his stepfather, <laughs> and his stepmother. Yes, Callie, Carlos, James, and Debbie, welcome to Idea City. We're all dying to hear what Jake has to say. Thank you so much. All right. All right. Well, I got to say, it's the first time I've been here, but it's been a phenomenal experience so far. I think this is a fantastic event. I'd like to start with a bit of a video, give you guys a bit of insight of a bit about the story and the team, and a bit about my personal journey uh, towards Waterloo. I remember this car ride from when I was a kid. I always looked forward to it. And where I would end up. and we can't get the model to run, or the brakes don't function, or when everything is just going wrong. I just think about my grandparents. Who would you see today if distance was not a barrier? Thank you, everyone. So today I'm here to kind of talk a bit more about, I mean, I, I'm very happy with how the other Hive Blue presentations and even the space presentations have gone. Very, very uh, interesting stuff and great to see some great progress with these other projects. So Waterloo. We started at the University of Waterloo, and it started in 2015 when we kind of heard about this idea, this challenge of what this Hyperloop really could be. And about 10 students kind of got together, um, and we, we basically started the first implications of what we needed to do to create a design, a feasible one, that would eventually work as a Hyperloop. So the Hyperloop, as you may have heard, is something that would be phenomenal for the way that we would move around. It would be almost as if we're bringing space to Earth. We're eliminating drag, we're eliminating the things that we take for granted in our everyday transport. And this is where we thought Waterloo and the Hyperloop, and we created the idea of Waterloop. And Waterloop, we have a few focuses that we wanted to go through, and a few steps of this process that we evolved through. One of the main things we really focused on as a team throughout all of our processes, and we do it today and from the very beginning, is the core of simplicity. And what I mean by that is actually something like complexity scales entropy. And entropy, for those that don't know, is almost the running down of the universe. When you have things that are more complex and more complicated, it becomes easier for things to go wrong. As this is a very safety-focused system, we don't want things to necessarily go wrong. We want this to be easy to make, and we want to be able to 
create an experience for our students that will allow them to learn these steps forward into creating these hyperloops. So what makes this a bit different? So number one, I would say the way we focus on pod design. I think it's great. A Hyperloop One has really focused on a lot of the infrastructure and a lot of the whole connection there. Uh, you've got Ryerson team, which is focused a lot on the subsystem, a, a way to really perfect a certain part of, of what the pod could be. And we really tried to take this idea of the pod as a design, a very design for manufacturability, easy to make, mass producible, and done in a way that wouldn't require a large amount of skill set. Our team, our team, the way we dynamically interact, the way we actually operate, I'll go a bit more into detail. We basically have a co-op program at Waterloo where every four months we actually have to lose 60 to 80% of the team, not their choice, but part of the program. And imagine trying to run a business or a company where you had to replace 80% of your employees almost every four months. So it's required us to think a bit more dynamically about how we operate. And our openness. And our openness comes from the ways we naturally collaborate with other teams, collaborate at events like this competition, and try to stay open with how we integrate into the Hyperloop community. This is a little quick render of our, one of our initial pod designs that we actually created when we went to the Texas Design Weekend um, in 2016. Now, this is what actually some of our teammates there that got to go down. We got us really to the next round and really pushed us forward um, into realizing what the next steps were once we started to see what other people were really working on. This brought us to our new design, which we designed for competition, and this was the goose one. Now, the goose has an iconic meaning for us at Waterloo. There's a lot of geese there, and fundamentally, they, they became kind of part of our, our, our team as well. So we've, uh, we've really gone towards a very simple design, and I think that's something that we kind of stood out there um, at competition. Um, and here we kind of go into, we actually use a pneumatic air caster levitation. We're using a thin film of air as a cushion, a cloud, to lift off and ride across the tube with almost no friction. So we use a contactless eddy current braking system that will actually wrap around the I-beam rail and slow us down at very high speeds. We have a backup friction system for redundancy, making sure things, if they go wrong, can be mechanically fail-safe. And a lateral control system, which allows us to guide along the rail. This was a drivetrain to get us out of the rail if things went wrong. You could go at a lower speed. And a geodesic shell that allowed us to deal with compressions and forces in ways as we expected. Now, we ended up building it, and we brought it to competition. We had an amazing experience, and overall, it was something we phenomenally learned very much um, about the ways we could create this in a much easier way. Just a bit about the team. We've got our team over there, but we've actually had over 300 students put their hands on this project, work on it at different times, be part of it in different ways, passing their energy and torch on in the ways that we can maintain what we've been doing. So today, we, we like to operate as a group of around 50 per term. We extend what we can, but overall, we've had a variety of different students that have been on board. We now work out at the Communitech Data Hub, where we actually get to work with other startups and kind of see how they operate and, and collaborate. We have our facility in the CHO Student Design Center in Waterloo, where we have our Hyperloop Bay, and we get to create and manufacture and test many parts of our development cycles. This is the Boko workshop, and actually a bit of a preview of how the new shell is going to be created. Um, I was actually looking up, and the, the ceiling, I thought it was absolutely beautiful yesterday, and it, it really reminded me of the kind of direction we were thinking about for um, this mold of the shell, and really what we're doing is we're going to be wrapping a material around it and creating a fiberglass carbon fiber hardened shell um, that is there. We created a 300-foot test track, an open-air track, in a facility called Lot 41, which we did low and mid-speed testing. And now I kind of wanted to talk a bit more about our openness as a team. Particularly, we have 
a very interesting opportunity with Waterloo where they have unrestricted IP ownership over what we develop. Unlike some other universities, this would be something that could restrict the progress later down the line. Even Google had to pay Stanford to, um, sorry, Stanford um, requested this from, from Google to, to naturally um, be part of their, their IP ownership. And the open source aspect of uh, what SpaceX released with what Elon released with the Alpha document, um, this allowed us to really look at these other options, these other possible designs, and fundamentally when we got to competition, it was, it was a very interesting experience to see completely different directions of how this was going. And everyone was very, instead of being closed off from what they were working on, was very open to this idea of how can we make the best practices? How can we make the better design overall? And this is where my perspective of the situation very, uh, very much grew. And I, I started to realize that this was a, a very diverse community and um, uh, I very much wanted to be a part of it. And one of the other sides of our openness is the diversity of how we recruit the team and who we recruit on the team. We have the most different types of faculties out of any student design team and different types of programs. We do a range of multicultural and age, and we look for the key developments of how to stay at a diverse team, especially in a place like Canada. So just talking about the, the competition one. This is moments before actually assembling the, the pod, right before it was going to get launched out. Um, as you can see, the team uh, was getting it all ready there. This is us all together once we've got set up there. Um, I believe this was moments after the exhibition period when we could release uh, to the general public what we were working on. And at a moment, uh, Elon Musk came by and <laughs> we did get his attention by saying, hey, do you want to see the Canadian pod team? And, uh, <laughs> He did want to check it out, so he was, he was quite interested, came over for a bit, and uh, gave us some cool feedback. And fundamentally, this brought us to where we are now and where we're going for competition two. It gave us the lessons and the, and the learnings possible, and I'm going to show you a bit of a preview of some of the designs and what, that we were working on. We'll be unveiling the full demonstration and the pod very soon. But some of the main things we learned were, for, for, for example, levitation, we realized that the suspension and the vibrations, we had to be very elaborate to deal with some of the unevenness in the track. We actually didn't predict that they would have such a um, high unevenness because it was a bit uh, different from what they had originally uh, spec'd. However, this allowed us to push the boundaries of what the Aircaster high-speed technology would be. And right now we are currently developing and testing this. Next, we wanted a very simple, redundant mechanical braking system, one that when power failed, everything could right and make sure that um, it would protect the passengers and make it a, a nice experience, nothing more than other forms of transport that you're used to. And we decided our lateral control would actually have some issues at around 100 meters per second. It would start to melt. It would start to get very hot. This was an issue. This is something where you didn't want deterioration to be an issue from mass use of operation. So we actually worked on this new technology called the magnetic wheel. And what it is is a contact-free wheel system that gives you stability, thrust, and if you reverse the direction of these magnetic wheels or you lose power, you actually get a braking effect. So it's a very interesting movement system that we've been using and working on, and we currently have prototyped a small-scale uh, version. But just as a preview, again, this is some of the current CNC parts that we have and currently are testing and assembling um, with our team back home as we speak. Now, where does this bring us to the future of Waterloop and what we envision? The Goose X, and the Goose X is really this idea of moving people to places where the distance doesn't need to be a barrier. I grew up in an environment where naturally I had locations I had to move to very much so, and I felt that these environments needed to be a bit closer. I, I fundamentally resonated with this idea as a project, and I realized we can connect people to become closer, to make not only families happier, businesses to thrive, innovation to be spread. And fundamentally, this is the experience we wanted to create for, for people so that they can feel as they don't feel limited into where they actually are on the earth. Here's some of our concepts as well, and uh, just in the light of really going towards this direction of creating what the Hyperloop really could be. 
And we want to work with the academia, the industry, and the government to continue to push the boundaries of what the technology can be and can be tested and created. And overall, collaborated with some of the great innovations around the world currently. Really, the, a lot of this technology actually has been worked on, created, and a lot of it now has to be integrated. And the integration aspect is what challenges the Hyperloop as an idea in general, and fundamentally, I believe, is becoming inevitable. And just a final uh, note there and quote. Um, I was very inspired by some of the speeches yesterday, specifically um, the ones referring to a lot about happiness and, and inner self. And I think happiness, um, there's a quote, a thousand candles can be lit from a single one. Happiness never decreases from being shared. And that, to me, is what connecting the future is really about. Thank you, everyone. Just a quick uh, note, we're going to have a June, oh sorry, July 21st unveil in Waterloo at Fed Hall, 3 to 6 p.m. If you are interested, you are welcome, and you are invited. Thank you, Moses. <laughs> it's got a picture.